Alrighty then, hello and once again, good evening YouTube, it's time, it's time for the Nostradamus Picks of the Week. This was not even close last time. So let's see if Nostradamus can redeem himself after last week's pathetic display. So this time around we're going to be doing every cup series driver, we're going to try and figure out where they're going to finish and all that good shit. So last year's race at Atlanta was fucking terrible. So I've decided to go back a bit in time to try and give us a more exciting, exciting, uh, predictions. So I went back to 2014 when Casey Kane won. I added in stage breaks where I thought was appropriate. So let's see if we can figure this shit out. Let's get this show on the road. Everyone's name's ready. We're going to see who is going to do everything in the cup race this week. Let's fucking go. The race was scheduled to begin at 7.46 p.m. Eastern Time, but started around five minutes later. Uh, that, that could have been cut, to be honest. So this is, this is like I said, it, like I said last time, this is ripped directly from the Wikipedia article, so whoever wrote this had a vendetta against the fact that the race started five minutes late. So it looks like one led the field to the green. I guess we'll have to find out who one is. And the pole sitter will be... David Reagan! <laughs> Nostradamus has given us some quality content, to say the least. David Reagan led the field to green. Two, who started second, spun the tires on the initial start and fell back to fifth. Who is going to have a bad start? Landon Castle. Nostradamus, we have to have a conversation about things right now. Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin reported seeing a cat run across the track in turn three on lap 14. It turned out to actually be a squirrel. I feel like whoever writes these has actually more fun writing these Wikipedia articles than they do actually watching the race. The caution flew for the first time the caution flew for the first time on lap 38 for debris. And NASCAR called someone down pit road to replace a faulty transponder. Who had a faulty transponder? Ty Dillon. He can have a fault. He, he doesn't even need to come down pit road. He can just not have a goddamn transponder for all I care. But he was allowed to retake a spot in fifth place. Yeah, in your fucking dreams, Ty. In your dreams. The race restarted on lap 45 and ran under green flank conditions until the caution flew for the second time on lap 78 after the end of stage 1. The stage winner was... Ryan Blaney! I'm not mad! I'll accept that one! Ryan Blaney can win as many stages as he likes. And who took the lead off of pit stops? Ryan Priest! Ah! So the 47 backing up a strong top 10 run in the shit show of a Daytona 500. So Ryan Priest took the lead during pit stops. Sounds good to me. The race restarted on lap 85 with blank and blank dueling for the lead. The battle for the lead was between Eric Almirola, you know what, it's realistic now, maybe not back before, and Chase Elliott, you know what, I could totally see that happening. I could actually see that happening. The caution, the caution flew for the third time on lap 7, 117 after William Byron spun through the grass on the front stretch. So that's unfortunate. Chad Knauss cannot save the 24 today. Brad Keselowski took the lead during the pit stop cycle and led the field to the restart on lap 122. See, after we get past the David Reagan and Landon Castle battle for the lead on the first lap, you know, things... Things started taking a bit more of a sane turn, <laughs> thankfully. BJ McLeod, I forgot he exists, made contact with the wall, exiting turn two on the restart. While at the front, Eric Jones took the lead on lap 123. I could see that. I don't know how he really didn't run much for Atlanta before making it to the Cup Series. I know that he's good at Texas, but it's pretty similarly shaped to Atlanta, but it's completely different, you know. As long as he doesn't destroy his tires at the start of the race, I can see it. I can see it. This pass for the lead occurred just before the caution flag flew again after Daniel Hemrick blows an engine, of course. Of course, the only good driver left at uh, RCR, he's gonna be the one that blows an engine. Shades of the 2017 chase. The race restart on lap 135, and 14 on lap 
let's let's ignore that. Let's ignore that. Stage two ended with Daniel Suarez in the lead. I could see that happening. I'm sure Stuart Haas is exceptional at this track, considering it was between Bush and Harvick earlier last year. So, Truex looks like his pit crew doesn't suck anymore. Going to Gibbs made things better. Truex took the lead off pit road and brought the race back to green. And someone brought out the fifth caution on lap 172 after he hit the wall in turn two. Oh no, who's going to be out of the race? <laughs> Daniel Hamrick. Um, Nostradamus, I think you forgot about something. He's already out of the race, but okay. Brad Keselowski took the lead on the restart with 98 to go. And Debris brought out the seventh caution of the race. Even in the stage caution era, we cannot handle this shit with debris cautions. Oh no. <laughs> Austin Dillon assumed the lead off of pit road under caution. And this brought about NASCAR overtime. Ooh, a debris caution sets up overtime. Who's gonna win the race? Ryan Newman! <laughs> what? Oh my goodness! Ryan Newman took the lead on the green-white checker attempt and held on to score the win in the 2019 Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500. Hello, Newman! Ryan Newman going to victory lane in race two with Roush. And you know, the thing is, I wouldn't even be shocked by that. Because I don't know where I said this. I'm pretty sure I said this on Discord. But since it's going to be impossible to pass in Atlanta because there's going to be no arrow ducks, which means it's basically just going to be the high drag package from 2015, with even less horsepower. Absolutely fucking stupid. I'm sick and fucking tired of watching this shit every fucking week, knowing exactly what to expect. I'm scared, guys. So it's basically going to be impossible to pass to begin with. But then you throw Ryan Newman into the equation, who's already impossible to pass. And there you go. Suddenly, suddenly you just put Newman out in the worst package the NASCAR has ever produced, and like he's just going to win. So you know what? It's it's kind of strange that he's going to do it. He's going to take the lead away from someone else on a green white checkered restart. But I can see it happening. So Ryan Newman wins at Atlanta. That's going to be interesting to see. In any case, thank y'all so much for watching. This has been Nostradamus Predictions for Atlanta. We'll see you next week when we head to Las Vegas and we throw the roulette wheel in this situation. I'll, I'll, like, I'll, like, I'll find one with a spinner on it and we'll see what happens there. But anyway, yep. So thank y'all so much for watching. This has been Nostradamus Predictions. I'll see you next time. Bye. What the fuck is happening right now? Hello? Come on, Vito. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Maybe. All right. Here we go. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, go over there. No. Oh, God. No kidding, Rick Allen. I couldn't have said it better myself, honestly.